Hi everyone, my name is Scott Chow. I am a second year mechanical engineering major at UCLA. And today I'm going to be presenting my project on exploring the viscoelastic properties of liquid crystal elastomers, otherwise known as LCEs, that I did this summer in the Mechanics of Soft Materials Lab uh, with my partner, Dahao, and under the supervision of the principal investigator, Professor Jin, and my data lab supervisor, Chen. So, wait, all right. So I'll start with an overview. Uh, I'm gonna start with an introduction, then move on to the background information about my project, the actual experiments that I did, and finally the results. So I'm gonna start this discussion by talking about soft materials, which have been under a lot more study recently because they're highly flexible. And this allows them to have much more various uses than the rigid, rigid counterparts, such as in manufacturing. And in particular, we're saying the soft material known as LCEs, which have the additional property of being able to shrink when exposed to light or heat. As you can see on the picture on the right, uh, when light is applied to the LCE, it starts to bend in and that causes it to shrink. And what's important about this is this is actually a reversible process. So if you take away the light or you take away the heat, then it'll return to its original shape. And that's why current research has been studying the actuation properties of LCEs. If you don't know what an actuator is, it's a device that can move back and forth. And so that's easy for an LCE because all I have to do is turn on and off some lights and you get some actuation. So that's why LCEs I found use in artificial muscles, biomedical devices, and more. Our research is focusing on the stress strain curves of LCEs, the rate dependence, and eventually we want to create a constitutive model to explain them. And I'm going to explain all of what that means in the coming slides. So what exactly is an LCE? Well, there's two parts to it. There's a liquid crystal part, there's the elastomer part. Liquid crystals, just think of them as rod-shaped particles, like the picture on the bottom left. And an elastomer, just think of that as like a spring or a rubber band. It will stretch when you apply some force to it. It's also known as a polymer. And when you embed a liquid crystal inside an elastomer, you get a liquid crystal elastomer. And that would look something like this, where you have rod-shaped liquid crystals with the polymer embedded on top of it. And so these come with interesting properties, mainly the liquid crystals come with interesting properties because they will reorient themselves in the direction of uh, an incoming stress. So what does that look like? Well, I'm gonna give an example of a monodomain LCEs, which is what we're working on with our research. Monodomain LCEs are LCEs whose liquid crystals are all oriented in the same direction, theta, as you can see on the picture on the bottom left. And when you stretch this, then all, you can see all the liquid crystals reorient themselves until they're parallel with the force. Um, from now on, I'm gonna to refer to these LCEs as zero degree LCEs, just for convenience. And another interesting thing about LCEs is that the liquid crystals will polarize light in the direction of orientation. And this is gonna be important when I start talking about our experiments. And lastly, the property that we're mainly focused on is the viscoelasticity of LCEs. And so there's two parts to this word, viscosity, you've probably heard of it with water or honey. Basically, if you apply a force onto some substance, it'll start to flow. This, um, such as gravity causing a river to flow. Um, this is known as continuous deformation. And this is contrasted with elasticity, where if you imagine a force being applied to a spring, it'll stretch a bit and that's it it's not gonna st stretch anymore. This is finite deformation. And it turns out LCEs have both viscous and elastic properties, hence viscoelasticity. So I talked about a lot of the properties of LCEs, but how exactly are we going to experimentally measure these? We ran three different experiments. The first one being tensile relaxation tests, second being liquid crystal reorientation, and lastly with digital image correlation. And so we'll start with the tensile relaxation tests. We use zero degree LCEs for these, and we use a machine called an Instron in order to analyze them. Um, this is a picture of an Instron right here. There's two clamps where we put an LCE in between, and then the Instron will stretch the LCE, and it will measure the amount of force, or that's analogous to stress, that is required to stretch the LCE to some displacement, which is analogous to strain. And hence, we can create a stress-strain curve of an LCE. And we did this for, uh, we stretch and unstretch LCEs at different strain rates, um, for a tensile test. And then for a relaxation test, we stretched the LCE to a 30% strain, and then we kept that constant and measured the stress over time to create a very interesting curve that we'll get into later. For liquid crystal reorientation, um, we moved on to samples that weren't zero degree LCEs. So this one's 30 degrees. This one's a 30 degree LCE. And if you remember, um, LCEs will polarize light in the direction of liquid crystal. And this is important because polarized light will have a will change its intensity. So if you put two polarizers on either side of the LCE and rotate them at five degree intervals to 90 degrees, um, and at each interval, you stretch a sample to, in our case, 100% strain at some loading rate, 
a camera will be able to capture the intensity to produce a graph that looks like this at each strain. And this graph has intensity on the y-axis and it has a polarizer angle on the x-axis. And this equation can be, or this graph can be fit into this equation. And if you remember, or uh, if you know the, um, when the polarizer angle is the same as the liquid crystal angle, then the intensity is minimized. So if we can find the parameter C, which is one of the four parameters in this equation that has to be fit, then we have the liquid crystal angle. Lastly, uh, we did digital image correlation, which I have a video of right here, which explains it the best. But basically, we speckled pattern and LCE and then stretched it under, under the instron and recorded it over time. And a DIC algorithm will be able to track the changes in the speckle pattern over time as the sample is getting stretched. This change leads to calculating displacement and thus the local strand at each point within the LCE. Um, and you can see the speckle pattern changing in this video right here. And so finally, we have some results. So first, we have our relaxation test where you can see that the stress decreases with time. If this were a purely elastic sample, the stress would be a constant value over time because you're keeping the strain constant. But because this is a viscoelastic um, material, the stress decreases over time, which is the LCE viscosity. The LCE viscosity is seen again when you look at the loading and unloading curves. Here um, you see the loading curve for 10% per second as it comes up to a certain amount of stress or strain, and then it unloads and then it comes down like this. The gap between the loading and unloading curves is known as hysteresis. And this occurs because of viscosity. Now, what's important about this is that if you look at the lower strain rates, like 0.101% per second, the hysteresis is really small. The gap between the curves is not very large, which reveals that the LCE viscosity doesn't play that much of a role at very, very low strain rates. In addition, we did experiments with the liquor crystal reorientation. Um, and uh, here's a graph of that right here, where you have the angles as dots at each strain as you stretch from zero to 100% strain. You can see the 1% per second and the 0.1% per second curves agree pretty well. The 10% per second curve is higher than both of them, which is really interesting. This shows that at 10% per second, the liquid crystals, they actually, la the orientation lags behind the reorientation of slower strain rates, which is interesting. And in addition to that, as the liquid crystals are reorienting, you can see that the slope of the stress strain curve is pretty small. That means that the um, liquid crystal reorientation is causing some sort of spontaneous deformation within the LCE. If you can imagine since these are rod shaped particles, as they're being stretched, then it will help the LCE, uh, it will help the LCE deform in the direction of the force. This is further shown in the digital image correlation or DIC test that we did, because we took a zero degree LCE and we calculated a shear strain within the LCE. And you can clearly see that um, uh, it's at zero degrees, then the, then the liquor crystals will not rotate because they're already aligned with the force. This means that there's zero shear strain. But with a 45 degree LC, you can see that, the, that there's obvious shear strain, about 40, 35%-ish shear strain. And this is caused by the fact that the liquor crystals are reorienting inside a 45 degree LCE. So in conclusion, we found out that the stress strain data that we obtained is highly dependent on the loading rate and the liquid crystal orientation. And that liquid crystals, when they reorient, they cause a shear strain within the LCE, and that leads to some sort of spontaneous deformation. This is all experimental data that we hope will serve as parameters for a theoretical model in the future. And speaking of the future, we still have much more work to do with our experiments because we only presented data for a 30 degree LCE for the reorientation. We still need to do 45, 60, 75, and so on to make sure that we can repeat the same results. We want to continue testing DIC to get more accurate quantitative data. Um, you notice that I really didn't talk about the DIC quantitatively that much. That's because we don't know how accurate it is yet. And finally, the holy grail, we want to develop a constitutive model to explain all properties of LCEs, just one model that all behaviors of the LCE can be explained. That is the end of my presentation. Uh, here are the references that I used. And of course, I would like to acknowledge um, the CERT program and my professor, uh, Professor Jin, for giving me this opportunity and all my friends at the, in the lab who helped me through a lot of the problems I had in the lab. And finally, I'd like to thank you and the audience for taking your time to listen to my presentation. And I hope you learned something today, either about liquid crystal elastomers, soft materials, stress strain curves, or maybe all of them. So yeah, thank you for your time.